more than 1,300 times. That's the theoretical number of times Earth could fit inside the mass of Jupiter. Despite being the largest planet in our solar system by a significant margin, this colossal gas giant remains shrouded in mystery for scientists. In an effort to unravel its secrets, NASA launched the Juno spacecraft, which has been closely studying Jupiter, the reigning giant of our solar system, since 2016. Through its mission, Juno has uncovered a series of astonishing and unexpected phenomena. Jupiter, a celestial body of immense size and intrigue, has been known to humanity since ancient times and observed by countless cultures over millennia. Yet, even today, many of its mysteries remain unsolved. What is known, however, is that the planetary giant has an equatorial diameter of a whopping 143,000 kilometers and thus reigns supreme in the size chart of our planetary system. In contrast to our significantly smaller earthly home, Jupiter, being a gas giant, has no solid surface. In fact, the structure of its atmosphere was one of the biggest mysteries in modern Jupiter research before the Juno mission. In detail, this, like the polar region and the magnetic field of the gas giant, had only been partially explored to date. And yet, this is just the tip of the mysterious Jupiter iceberg, because when Juno left our blue home planet on August 5th, 2011, it had many more exciting mission objectives in its luggage. It's no accident that NASA chose to name its spacecraft Juno. In Roman mythology, Juno was the wife of Jupiter, the king of the gods, and the only goddess capable of seeing through the veil of fog that Jupiter often used to hide his mischief and affairs. From an astronomical perspective, however, this veil of mist concealed not divine secrets, but rather fundamental questions about Jupiter's origins. By analyzing the distribution and abundance of water, ammonia, oxygen, and nitrogen in its atmosphere, Juno aims to uncover these mysteries. Additionally, given that Jupiter has the densest atmosphere of any planet in the solar system, Juno is expected to provide unprecedented insights into the global structure and dynamics of the gas giant's atmosphere beneath its thick cloud cover. In addition, Jupiter holds a few more mysteries among the colorful, almost parallel cloud bands. To gather new insights into the mass of the core, the convection currents in the interior, and the presence of water in the planet, Juno was tasked with measuring these phenomena. The magnetic and gravitational fields, along with our knowledge of the magnetosphere, which in Jupiter's case is the largest and strongest in the solar system, should also be taken to a whole new level during the course of the mission. So, what has Jupiter revealed in the realm of the gas giant? Jupiter is breathtakingly different. On July 5th, 2016, after a journey of almost five years, Juno swung into an eccentric polar orbit around Jupiter and, a few weeks later, performed its first close flyby, passing through the gas giant's cloud tops at a distance of less than 5,000 kilometers. The data and images gathered and generated during this mission once again astounded researchers on Earth, as the initial findings from Juno revealed some monumental surprises. Among these was the discovery related to Jupiter's polar regions, the distinctive wind bands that typically encircle the planet, contributing to its iconic appearance, seemed to disappear entirely in these areas. In their place, massive storm vortices emerge, appearing as enormous spots and swirls. The storms near Jupiter's North Pole can span up to 1,000 kilometers in diameter, while those at the South Pole can reach even larger sizes extending up to 1,400 kilometers across. A look at the subsequent Juno image reveals that these ancient formations are not only of immense scientific significance, but also hold a striking artistic quality. Although the structure initially looks like the work of an abstract painter, it is actually a purely planetary painting. Incidentally, the light blue areas are high storm clouds, likely consisting of ammonia ice and water ice crystals. They tower colossally above the lower cloud layers, which are colored dark in the photo and even partially cast a shadow. However, 
The fact that experts described Jupiter as breathtakingly different was not only due to such wondrous images, but also to the astounding appearance of its polar regions. In contrast to Saturn, there are no pronounced ring currents at Jupiter's poles, such as Saturn's so-called hexagon. Quite the opposite, Juno could not detect any structure here that would even remotely resemble such a wind pattern. In other words, this means that the polar dynamics and atmospheric structure of Saturn and Jupiter must differ significantly. No less astonishing were the discovery of a 7,000 kilometers wide cloud that Juno identified far above the cloud cover of the North Polar region and the thermal measurement data. Recent findings have unveiled that the gas flows beneath the cloud cover are distributed in a significantly different manner than previously believed. Rather than a relatively uniform ammonia ocean, the gas at the equator forms a massive ammonia column that encircles the planet in a ring. Experts noted that this column-shaped flow bears a striking resemblance to Earth's Hadley cells, air currents that carry warm, moist air from the equator and allow it to descend as cold, dry air in the tropics. Additionally, an unexpected discovery was made regarding the magnetic field. Data gathered by Juno revealed that the magnetic field is nearly twice as strong as earlier estimates suggested and exhibits a patchy structure, with some regions showing much greater intensity than others. To say that the data collected by Juno caused a stir among scientists would be an understatement. Just how radically our view of Jupiter has changed becomes clear when we listen to the words of Scott Bolton, the principal investigator of the Juno mission. He said, The whole thing looks different than anyone would have thought before. I mean, no matter how we looked at it, we were shocked by what we saw. But sometimes, the things you can't see also cause a mixture of amazement and disbelief. Although experts had predicted a rocky core the size of Earth for Jupiter, the findings continue to challenge and reshape our understanding of this colossal planet. The initial data from Juno failed to confirm the prevailing theory about Jupiter's core. Scott Bolton remarked, We don't observe anything resembling a core. There might be a core composed of heavy elements, but it might not be entirely centralized. It could be much larger, possibly half the size of Jupiter. This puzzling revelation left many questions unanswered. However, while the Juno mission initially posed more questions than it resolved, it provided valuable insights into other aspects, ultimately unraveling the mystery behind Jupiter's remarkable how Juno solved a decades-old mystery. Among the most captivating natural phenomena on Earth, auroras are also a constant feature on Jupiter. Yet, for decades, Jupiter's energetic polar lights were shrouded in mystery. Unlike Earth's auroral ovals, which occur between 65 and 80 degrees latitude, Jupiter's auroras do not align directly above the poles. Additionally, the prolonged duration of these light displays, lasting several days as observed from Jupiter, long perplexed scientists. Juno's findings finally brought clarity to these enduring questions. But a few years ago, Juno in collaboration with the European XMM Newton X-ray Telescope, finally succeeded in uncovering the background to this peculiar phenomenon. After Juno had plunged into Jupiter's magnetic field and XMM Newton had simultaneously analyzed an aurora over Jupiter's North Pole, it was clear that the auroras are actually generated far away from the gas giant. More specifically, the oxygen and sulfur ions surf the polar magnetic field lines from one pole to the other, and on this journey, they are accelerated in stages by a special type of electromagnetic wave, which ultimately creates the typical pulsation. When the solar wind interacts closely with Jupiter's magnetic field, compressing it, electromagnetic ion cyclotron waves are generated in the outer region of the magnetic field. This interaction releases energy producing vibrations that propel ions back toward Jupiter in bursts. Ultimately, this incoming particle storm activates the auroras, causing them to glow. Experts suggest that this fundamental phenomenon may also be relevant on other planets, such as Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The wet gas giant, 
As briefly mentioned earlier, deciphering Jupiter's origin is also one of the overarching Juno mission objectives. To understand how and from what the gas giant formed, it's therefore essential to take a close look at its chemical composition. That is exactly what Juno did when it studied the cloud cover of the Colossus at close range using its microwave radiometer. In principle, Jupiter's cloud-filled atmosphere does not consist of water vapor or water ice, but of frozen ammonia and ammonium hydrogen sulfide. Yet, there are also clouds of water ice here, and more than previously thought. While the measurements of the Galileo mission still indicated that the gas envelope of the planet contains far less water than assumed at the point studied, the observations made by Juno showed that Jupiter's atmosphere, at least at the equator, contains much more water than suggested by the previous data. The absorption pattern of reflected microwave radiation reveals specific details about water content, offering valuable insights into Jupiter's overall water composition. Numerically, this indicates that the equatorial region of Jupiter contains 2,500 parts per million of water, meaning water accounts for approximately 0.25% of all molecules in its atmosphere. If these measurements are representative of the entire planet, Jupiter's atmosphere would hold three times more water than the sun reflecting on this remarkable discovery. Scott Bolton expressed his profound amazement, stating, just when we thought we understood Jupiter, it reminded us how much we still have yet to learn. But what can the values tell us about the formation of Jupiter? Well, according to the current theory, the gas giant was the first planet to form in the primordial cloud around the young sun. In the process, it incorporated a large part of the material in the accretion disk. If Jupiter were to have formed through a partial collapse of the primordial cloud, its elemental distribution should correspond to that of the Sun and the rest of the primordial cloud. However, if the planetary core formed through the gradual accumulation of smaller chunks, these could have carried more ice and thus water. Some formation models can already be discarded based on the new Juno data. But before we can draw a comprehensive picture of Jupiter's birth, a little more patience is required. As previously noted, we still don't know if the water content in the equatorial region is representative of other areas on the planet. To address this, additional on-site measurements are crucial. The good news, however, is that Jupiter's successor mission is already underway. If everything goes as planned, the ESA's JUICE probe is set to arrive at Jupiter in July 2031. Once there, its mission will not only involve unraveling the mysteries of the gas giant, but also determining whether the Galilean moons, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, could support life. And speaking of discoveries, our probe has confirmed that the subscribe button is absolutely clickable. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a new video from us. See you soon.